Green Hills Council meeting for May 28, 2024 to order. Clerk, call the roll. Ms. Hudson? Here. Mr. Borner? Here. Ms. Wather? Here. Mr. Lee? Here. Ms. Hermes? Here. Mr. Halter? Here. Ms. Mayor Moore? Here. We have a prayer by Maria Walter. Lord, we ask you to send your spirit of servanthood upon all of here present this evening to do your work for the benefit of all in our community. We ask you to bless our elected and appointed officials so they may deliberate with wisdom and act with courage. So close to Memorial Day, we want you to please remember all the fallen, not just the ones from World War I or World War II, but Afghanistan, Korea, any, any of the, our soldiers that are down. Um, all our men in uniform signed a blank check. Doesn't matter if it's to the United States of America, to the state of Ohio, to the city of Green Hills, to serve and protect. Please make sure that you are with them at all times because when they sign that check, they are giving away a part of themselves, their body, their heart, the last drop of blood, and that of their relatives, sons, daughters, wives, etc. So please be with them every day, not just we are praying for you on Memorial Day. We ask you to bless us all and that everything that we do here tonight will move you to welcome us one day into your kingdom as good and faithful servants. We ask this in the name of our brother Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Okay, we have the minutes of the previous council meeting of April 23rd, 2024, and the council work session of May 14th, 2024. If there are no corrections, the minutes stand as approved. We've got uh, some presentations to be made, uh, Chief. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I'd like to take a minute to recognize uh, Police Officer Blake Mayberry. You're fine right there. Maybe over here. So you know what? I need my glasses. Thank you so much. You know, a lot of things we do uh, are naturally respond to crimes in progress and try to prevent crime, but uh, I felt this uh, was worthy of bringing before the board and the mayor, and I just want to mention that on April 29th at 4.05 in the morning, um, Officer Mayberry was dispatched to a residence on Burley Circle, uh, reference a non-breather, a 40-year-old female non-breather, along with the Green Hills Fire Department. So Officer Mayberry, Mayberry responded, he was there within a minute or so. Uh, he entered the residence and found another individual doing CPR up, up the steps on the 40-year-old female that was unconscious. Uh, he took over CPR after finding no pulse from this individual. Um, the patient began snoring and looking like uh, she was attempting to breathe, so he rolled her over into a recovery position. The uh, patient then stopped once again and had no pulse, and he resumed, resumed CPR until Green Hills Life Squad showed up. Um, with that, I want to read a letter I got from Dustin Graham from the fire department, which I thought was fitting for the occasion. Uh, he wrote this the next day to myself, to whom it may concern. I would like to hi highlight the officers. I would like to highlight the efforts of police officer Blake Mayberry on the early morning of April 29th, 2024, in regards to his response to a non-breather cardiac arrest the Green Hills Fire Department was dispatched to. Upon my arrival to the scene, Officer Mayberry had began CPR and provided me with a clear report on what led up to the incident. His efforts was demonstrated of high quality training, dedication, and skill for his work. While Blake may not be an EMT, he demonstrated the highest degree of patient care and provided me valuable assistance throughout the run. Officer Mayberry has been a long standing history has a long-standing history of always being on squad runs with us and his continued support of us and our runs has consistently resulted in safer, more effective patient care. 
Most importantly, the results of Officer Mayberry's actions directly contributed to the patient's survival. I'd like to nominate P.O. Blake Mayberry for a life-saving award. I would also like to extend my thanks to him for always being there when we need him. And that's from Dustin Graham, firefighter AEMT from Green Hills Fire Department. So we appreciate uh, Dustin bringing our attention that great work that Officer Mayberry did on April 29th. Uh, we have had follow-up with residents. Uh, and I'm glad to hear at home and everybody's doing well at the residence. And like I said, she's 40 years old, so ah. she's got a long life to live. Um, Officer Mayberry has already received a life-saving award through the department prior to my arrival here in Green Hills, but uh, even with that being said, I thought it was important to recognize what he's done this time, uh, so I want to present him with his Pre Preservation of Life Award. And I'll read that. It says, Police Officer Blake M. Mayberry, saving a life is an extraordinary feat and your actions on April 29th, 2024 exemplify the importance of first responders in our community and make us all proud. Your ability to remain calm under pressure, assess the situation, and apply life-saving techniques like CPR was invaluable. Your dedication to duty and quick response not only contributed to the resident's survival, but also reassured our community of the unwavering commitment to our, of our police force. Awarded this 28th day of May in the year of our Lord, 2024, by, signed by the mayor, David Moore, municipal manager, Yvonne Kovac, and myself. We appreciate you. Officer Blake also was told by Hank, sorry not to be here present, he had a graduation of a grandchild. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on. Um, we have um, a monthly report by uh, Fire Chief Tony Spaeth. And so, good to thank see you. Tony back. It's good to be back. <laughs> So uh, I'll just preface this by saying that uh, um, a number of years ago I stopped coming to council meetings because I had this very busy, high-pressure job at the Kroger company, and my wife said, you got to start saying no to stuff. So I have retired from Kroger, so it's a good chance you're going to start seeing a whole lot more of me, and uh, if I'm not here, there will likely be someone in my place to give a report. So I'm, I'm happy to be back. Um, I just wanted to give a few uh, uh, updates tonight. Uh, I have a few statistics to share and a comment, and then I have a uh, prepared statement that I'd like to read. Um, so uh, May is not over yet, but, but we've been busy. Uh, through, uh, through today, we've made 22 fire runs and 47 EMS runs for a total of 69 runs, and the month's not even over yet. And just to give you perspective, last year, the highest month that we had in runs was 62. So um, we've, been, we've been pretty busy lately. Uh, the other thing I wanted to make note of is that uh, we, we typically have a structure fire every couple of months, two, three months, or we might go six months without a structure fire. And thus far this month, we've had two in the village of Green Hills, uh, one on Chalmers Court on the 21st, and then another one yesterday on Ligorio. Luckily, both of those fires were small. They were inside the residence, and we were able to mitigate those rather quickly. But I did want to uh, make special note of that and um, thank our members for uh, their response and all our mutual aid partners who also respond with us when we have structural fires. Um, just a note of thanks uh, to everybody um, for attending the open house on the 4th. I know, uh, Chief, you mentioned that as well. But even though it was a soggy day, it was a good turnout, and uh, we were able to do a lot of stuff indoors. And 
Um, and so uh, we, we always appreciate being part of the community and being involved in those kind of things. So uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, the other comment I wanted to make was uh, we've had two storm plan activations this month. Uh, we had a roll, uh, number of storms that rolled through on May 7th and then again on the 26th here just a few days ago. And so uh, what happens when there's a roll of storms that come through, Hamilton County puts us on a storm plan. And basically what that is, is we sign on our computer, we put members, uh, personnel in the fire station, and they send us the details over computer. And the reason they do that is because the number of calls gets very, very overwhelming for the dispatchers rather quickly. And they don't need to hear us going on the scene and going available and talking on the radio unnecessarily. So they'll just give us the detail and say, there's a tree down at 146 Julep, and we'll go, we'll clear the situation, and then we'll respond on to the next one. So that's happened twice this month, um, and I just wanted to make mention of that. Some of you may have seen that Channel 5 came out and talked to me. I'm not a tree expert by any stretch of the imagination, uh, but I will tell you that all of you know that we are a tree city. We have a lot of trees, and when the storms come through, they do fall down, and uh, we get called because we show up in four to six minutes and try to fix the problem. We, our job is to make sure the scene is safe. Um, if we can remove a branch or even a larger tree from across the road, we will certainly do that. But oftentimes trees are falling on structures. We had one tree fall on a structure on the 7th, actually fell on two houses at once. And then uh, when they come down on the power lines and the power goes out, again, we, we don't, water and electricity don't mix. And we, you know, we provide safety. We cordon off the area. We notify Duke and the experts will come out. So um, just wanted to let everyone know that's here and watching. That's what we do. Uh, we provide safety. We will mitigate if we can, but uh, we will not put ourselves in harm's way. Anything that would require us to do something beyond our training, we would not do. Any questions or comments on any of that? Um, year to date, uh, just, just to kind of catch everybody up. So last year, we made 475 EMS runs and 172 fire runs for a total of 647. Um, this year, uh, to date, we are at 192 EMS runs and 81 fire runs, um, and that's a total of 273. So the net is we're about five runs ahead of where we were this same time last year. And that report has been provided to the uh, village manager. I now have a, uh, I have a prepared statement that I'd like to read. And, um, just kind of kicking things off here a little bit. Um, some of you may or may not know, but uh, myself and the council safety committee and the municipal manager, the mayor, uh, we've been talking for about a year and a half now about the delivery of fire and EMS service in the village of Green Hills. Um, as you know, we are, as you don't know, we are the only totally 100% volunteer fire department in Hamilton County. Uh, so that makes us very unique in a lot of ways. But it also puts us along with the same issues that other departments in the area are facing, and that is uh, increases calls, uh, increased demand for our service, and a decrease in the number of members and staffing situation. So um, with your permission, I'd like to read this statement, and um, I'll begin that now. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity to address the mayor and village council, village administration, and most importantly, the Green Hills community and some of our firefighters who are here this evening. For those that may not know me, uh, my name is Tony Spath. I'm your fire chief, and I've been so for the last 26 years. I just celebrated 40 years on the Green Hills Volunteer Fire Department. I have the best job in the world, leading the amazing members of our department. For 86 years, the Green Hills Volunteer Fire Department Incorporated has provided outstanding fire and EMS as a private company, contracting with the village of Green Hills and fully staffed with all volunteers. We continue to provide that service today. As the only true volunteer fire department left in Hamilton County, we are proud of that fact. While we still provide outstanding and professional fire and emergency medical services to our citizens, we have found ourselves needing to ask for assistance from neighboring communities via mutual aid to answer some of our alarms. Since the end of the COVID-19 pandemic, we have experienced an increase of instances of needing to ask for help from our neighbors more often. They too, like us, are faced with increased call volume and staffing shortages. Other factors are an increase of fire departments in Hamilton County transitioning from a part-time, part-career organization to staffing by exclusively full-time firefighters and paramedics. 
Combine this with a state and national trend of decreasing numbers of people entering the fire service and a decreasing number of people joining volunteer fire departments, we are faced with a difficult situation and a high desire to address the issue. You may say, well, why not just hire more volunteers? That's a very fair question, but we, were, we wish it were only that easy. During the first year, a new member faces a minimum of well over 200 hours of training to become certified, and that doesn't even count the time spent at weekly training and answering emergency dispatches. The time commitment is significant and cuts into important family and free time. About a year and a half ago, I brought this concern to the Council Safety Committee, of which I am a member, and informed the village of the need to evaluate how we staff the fire department with volunteers and consider moving forward with a transition to a part-time model by which we would staff the fire department with part-time firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics. We have long provided our service on what I would classify as a shoestring budget. Recognizing that there are limited tax revenue streams and fundraising only provides so much, we are proud of what we have been able to achieve. We have not gone to the voters since 2007. That's 17 years ago. Most recently, last year in April, we made our very first ALS run, and that's advanced life support. This was a culmination of over three years of work, planning, and paying for a cardiac monitor that cost $36,000, which we just paid off last month with a 36-month interest-free loan. We did the work ahead of time, including getting the approval from our medical director, the Academy of Medicine, to first and foremost benefit our citizens. But secondly, as the first step in asking for funds to pay part-timers by the hour to more effectively provide fire and EMS. This is a huge accomplishment for a volunteer organization. Over the last year and a half, my team and I have attended seminars on FLSA, which is Fair Labor Standards Act, We've consulted with multiple experts in the field, including attorneys, and developed proposed pay structures that we feel are fair and affordable before going to the voters with a potential fire levy. The village has also solicited neighboring communities for proposals to provide fire and EMS and to date has received one proposal. The fire department is against this proposal. We know that we can, with the appropriate and fair financial support, continue to provide the services with superior response times and professional service that goes way beyond answering fire and EMS alarms, which include but are not limited to the numerous public education programs we can provide CPR classes, child car seat installations performed by certified installers, fire inspections, and also the fun extras like the Easter egg hunt, trick or treat, and so much more. We are a part of the very fabric of the Green Hills community. The Green Hills Volunteer Fire Department is a significant part of the village identity with the Pioneer logo on all of our trucks. Your village administration, mayor, and council have very wisely just initiated the services of a qualified management consultant to objectively study our situation and provide recommendations. I'm looking forward to working with everyone in hopes that a recommendation on how we can maintain your current fire department and make necessary and needed changes so that we can reasonably comp compensate volunteers, hire part-time workers who are, who are most often ready and trained and certified while maintaining our private status, which is the benefits to the village and to the citizens we serve. We anticipate asking voters to support a fire and EMS levy this fall, and we hope that all citizens find the value and ability to support this to allow the Green Hills Fire Department to continue what we do best, and that is serve the great people of Green Hills, Ohio. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Tony. Comments? Any questions or comments? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Thanks. everyone. I appreciate your time. Great. Moving on, we have our monthly report from our ace librarian, uh, Jennifer Weiger. Well, thank you so much for letting me come and update you guys again. As you can see from my shirt, summer reading starts on Saturday. That is for <laughs> kids and teens up to 18 at all of our locations, and this year it is summer reading to go along with the governor's um, 
science of reading initiative, so we're trying to tie in so that we can help support that important initiative. And for that, kids and teens can read for fun, set personal goals, and complete fun activities to stay active all summer long. Kids will get a tracker and have a 25-day challenge. Um, they get the tracker and sticker set when they sign up, as well as getting a free book and a red ticket voucher while supplies last. Um, and then they can use the sticker each day to mark what kind of activity they have completed. And after 25 days, if you bring that back to the library, you can get completion prizes, including a fidget band with little pop bubbles, or a phone stand, or color change cups, or a personalized set of color <coughs> pencils in this handy dandy tin, which are very nice. So when you come in, sign up means you get the packet and you take it home. And you get the free book and the Reds voucher just for doing that. Here is what it looks like, and we already have the stickers attached and the coupons, and we're ready to go on this. So kids get to set all kinds of different activities, and this can be for all different ages. So if you have a very young one and you are helping them with reading to them or anything, that certainly counts. And we have books for all ages that will be available, so everybody is welcome to participate with that. For the teens, they will be doing a bingo challenge. Complete five in a row. And then you will be able to come in and pick up one of these prizes. And you, some of them you get to set, some of them are other ones to try and stretch. So you get to pick all kinds of different things from attending a library event, to reading every day for a week, to you know picking a new book you have never tried before. So all kinds of fun things. Um, if you are really avid and you do it all right away, there is special bonus just for you guys. Um, the teens have an extra bonus car bingo card, and then the kids have another 15-day tracker after the 25-day. We don't start doing that before July 16th just because, yeah. Sorry. You have to do it by July 16th. You can't sign up after that because you don't have 15 days. The summer reading runs from June 1st to July 31st. And because we always have all of our fun schedules for June and July, many activities that will be going on for all ages at the library because even though it is summer and that is the kids, the winter checkout challenge is for the grown-ups in the winter, we have programs for all ages including a mindfulness workshop that will be on this coming Monday, June 3rd at 7 p.m. and that will you know, come and center yourself, take a moment to just do a little bit of self-care, kind of bring yourself into appreciation for where we are right now. It's going to be a very interesting program and I hope that a lot of people will join us. We're also going to be having a community art mosaic project going on where we have little tiles and you can take the little cardboard tile home and decorate it or decorate it at the library and then give it to us and we'll add it to a big community mural. So that'll be going on all month. We're also going to have a lot of programs for kids and teens. I'm only going to highlight a few of them. They're all online at chpl.org or stop in the library or give us a call and we'll be happy to tell you all about them. But kids can learn about square dancing on Wednesday, June 5th at 2 p.m., learn to crochet on Tuesday, June 11th at 3 p.m., or learn about tardigrades on Tuesday, June 25th at uh, 2 p.m. There are many others, so again, come and visit us. Teens are going to have a special tie-dye shirt program on Wednesday, June 12th at 2 p.m., and there will be face painting with Little Fox on Saturday, June 29th at 11 a.m. We also, for the grown-ups, have three book clubs and one classic movie club, and so anybody who's interested in our nonfiction is on the first Thursday at 3 p.m. The uh, Romance Readers is on the second Saturday at 11 a.m. The uh, Mystery Book Club is on Mon the third Monday at 6.30 p.m., and the Classic Movie Club is on the third Saturday at 11 a.m. We have the books or the movies, you read them at home and then we come together and talk about them. You watch the movie at home and then come and talk about it so you don't have to sit in our chairs for three hours to get through a particular movie. And all kinds of other fun things, so stop in this summer and see what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer, thank you. I want to thank you because you make sound that is so uh, effortless of what you do. But I, this is my 48th year of teaching, and I'm going to teach next year. And the attention span of, of children, depending the age, could be from seconds to minutes, maybe five minutes or 10. So I know that you are making all of this to maintain something going and not just let him wander around. I know how hard you work. 
and you make it sound like it just comes out of the air, and it doesn't. Well, I know that. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for what you do for the children here. Well, thank you. We are glad that we can be partners with that to help them keep going forward all summer instead of, you know, just kind of letting it slide. So we're very happy. Thank you. Where will the mural be displayed when it's done? It will be in the library, either on our window or on our bulletin board. We haven't decided quite yet because we haven't seen how many we're going to be getting back. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh -huh. Great. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on, reports of municipal officials, Municipal Manager Yvonne Kovac. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to start with the legislative report. Um, of the items that are on your agenda tonight. The first one, we have an ordinance uh, that is listed as an emergency ordinance for you to consider tonight. Uh, this code, this ordinance will update our code to reflect that it's the Ohio Fire Code, how timely, right? <laughs> um, that we enforce in Green Hills. So this is consistent with other municipalities and townships around the uh, state of Ohio. And we need our code to say our code, big code book to say the Ohio Fire Code is what we enforce. Um, the next item is the first of two resolutions that we'll have to pass to renew our uh, street levy, street repair and maintenance levy. This is a small one at 1.5 mils. Um, it generates about 36,000 a year. Uh, we've had it, we renew it every five years, but it was first voted in 1979 goes way back. We really do count on it for our matching funds to um, try to get additional road money and we're having a lot of luck with that in recent years. <laughs> Thanks to the Transit Infrastructure Fund, I always have to plug them because it's just awesome what they're doing for communities to um, get, get money out to us after they committed to do that with their levy and they are indeed doing it. So we certainly appreciate that. And this levy is, is a key part of making that all happen for us. The next item um, authorizes the preparation and submission of another application to the Transit Infrastructure Fund. This will be round four, and with this money we will do, um, we're proposing to do Dame, Damon Road um, from <coughs> Winton to Cromwell, then Cromwell from Damon to Winton, and then um, our little piece of Springdale Road um, from Damon to the Corporation Mall all of which is in really bad shape and needs it. So hopefully um, we will be awarded that money as well. Um, okay, let's see. The next resolution on your agenda is in support of the Ohio Commission for the United States Semi-Quincentennial, which comes up in two years. Yeah, we're in 04, we're in 24, it's in 26. And, um, I practiced on that word, by the way. <laughs> Don't try to say it fast. Uh, anyway, the mayor has already passed this to the uh, Community Development Committee to review, and um, I'm sure that they'll be getting back to everybody. Um, in the very near future, there's commitments that the village has to make once this resolution is passed to have a committee of people to work with the state's committee and then um, get the fun stuff with coming up with events and or um, things that we want in our community to celebrate the 250th birthday of our country. Then the uh, final resolution on, in your packet tonight is the first of three pieces of legislation that are required for the tree assessment renewal. Uh, this is something that uh, in this particular item, it outlines the pre tree tree program and the cost to be paid from the money collected through the assessment. Council does this every 10 years. Um, so 10 years ago it was set at 50 cents per linear foot. I think we all know there's trees. <laughs> Chief Spaeth mentioned it's costly to take those down. Um, it's costly to put them up, but even more, our trees are massive here for the most part, and those can be quite expensive. So costs have really gone up. We do get a lot of requests just to, to prune and cut branches down, keep them from going to houses, on and on and on. So um, we'd like to see the 50 cent. It's written to raise it to a dollar per linear foot. Um, I would say that I'll give you an example of my house. I pay $35 a year. It's only collected one time um, during the course of the year. That's in the January taxes. 
So my $35 will go up to like $60, 60 something, whatever, what is 30? I'm paying 32.50 now, it'll go up to double that, and that's what I'll be paying. Um, so 65. 65. Thank you, I knew 65 was in there somewhere. I started with 35 instead. Um, it, it's not a lot of money, but it it's really necessary to have it there, so. Um, I believe this first public, this first resolution does get published, and then there might be a second one. I think that also gets published somewhere um, the fi before the final passage. A little bit of a complicated process. This is the first step. If there's any questions on that, I'm sure Minister Forbes is just more than happy to answer them. <laughs> um, for my regular council report, the pool opened this last weekend, and, and, and despite the bad weather we had on Sunday, um, turnout was really good. Um, it's looking good. So that was a great start to the season, and we hope it continues. Um, this sat coming Saturday, we're going to have the community yard sale, and I, I know um, that will be discussed a little bit more later, but we're looking forward to um, having as many people participate. if. If residents haven't called in yet, don't worry. You can still participate. Just get up on Saturday morning, put your stuff out, and um, we will have signs, arrows if you call ahead of time. But otherwise, just kind of watch for the crowd walking around and have some fun with it. We're also, for the first time, going to have it um, on the, up on the commons. Um, you do have to call ahead for that. And we are also hoping that um, some of our businesses are going to participate as a sidewalk sale or any, any way they want to step out of their business and do something along their sidewalk to, to be part of it. So we're hoping that adds a nice new element to this. Um, the um, transit infrastructure project number three, which is the Ferret Ingram Road project, you've probably seen the surveyors that have been out there doing a lot of markings. We will be going out to bid very soon on that, as soon as I have a specific date for it. Advertisement, I'll, I'll let you know when that's going to be. Oh, oh, yeah, okay, this is great. Just mm. today, we, you know, just today we received notice that we were awarded 70000 from the county's municipal road fund program. Mm -hmm. um, so we can put that money towards engineering fees that are associated, that it would be with the Damon Road project. So um, that's, that's really good news. Um, and then in terms of the community development block grant money that uh, I know we've had a number of discussions on that at earlier meetings. Um, they've not, the county has not yet released information though on, on the actual awards, but we're looking forward to seeing that hopefully, hopefully sometime very soon we'll, we'll find out. This is money that we want to use for the park to get those pathways completed. Then we have new residents who have moved into the first newly constructed home up on DeWitt. Um, some of us had the opportunity to see the house before they moved in. Um, it was quite lovely, as is the house next door. It was quite impressive. Um, they're very excited to be there, so we welcome them to our community, and we look forward to additional construction. I think they're supposed to begin construction on two more homes uh, very soon. And I wanted to mention a couple things at the next work session. The finance director will be presenting the 2025 tax budget annual presentation that y'all look forward to very much. <laughs> and then uh, the June and July work sessions will be at six, not seven. Okay. And that's all I have right now. <coughs> Any comments or questions? Yeah, I have a couple of comments and questions. Um, first of all, I want to thank you and your office, Mike, and everybody, because I gave the long list that I always do for preparation of Memorial Day. The flags were in place, uh, the, the, um, the troop, the Boy Scouts troop of 400 had the, uh, the flags in place. Everything that it needed to be, the, the phone, the one call happened, it appears on the Green Hills Journal, it, everything was very cohesive, and it was very, very, timely done. So I really okay. appreciate that. And I know that, it, again, it looks like it's just effortless, but it, there's a lot of work on components of that. Um, I do have a question about the ordinance um, for uh, the uh, codified ordinance of the fire code. Um, why is that an emergency? What, what, since when we should have had it done? Or what delay us? Or, or this just suddenly appear? Or 
how does this come to be an emergency? Um, I, I, you can hit that first, but I, I will just mention that um, a meeting that we had, I, I think Chief Spaeth was in it, Troy, our fire marshal's in the back corner. They drew it to my attention that it needed to be done. Okay. ASAP, so. Okay. Was that it? There yep, was probably that's... more elaborate wording in the legislation, but that's my version. No, that's, that's a pretty good explanation, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Mr. Right. Mayor, I can comment on that. Just oh, okay. Every so often, that has to be renewed. Uh, okay. The reason is because there are certain changes in the lot of code. We want to we want to stay up to the latest code. We want to be making sure that we adopt the latest code so that um, it allows us to enforce the code. Yeah. I, I understand that, but what so it attracts. What attracts my attention is the, the emergency that it doesn't have the regular amount of readings or prepare and why are we caught always, you know, on that particular moment? Why weren't we savvy ahead of time to have done that in, uh, in, a, in a timely manner? But I didn't want, we are not in any particular failure to comply. We're just taking care of it now. Is that correct? Correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if something comes up along the way, myself or Troy will bring it to the attention of the council late, or the manager, say, hey, stop the something that'll look at Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Law director. Jeff uh, Forbes. Thank you, Mayor. Um, nothing really to report tonight. No pending legal matters uh, with the village. And when you look at the um, the legislation that's at the state right now, there's really nothing new of, of municipal interest. There's some things about townships that you don't care about. Um, and there's a proposal, but I mean, I'm sure, again, it's not really a council issue. Chiefs, I'm sure, aware that they're uh, introduced some things to, to restructure how OVI um, sentencing works, but really nothing that would um, impact the village at this point. Okay. But we'll continue to monitor. All right. I um, just want to ask a question. I had a lot of um, neighbors and um, not really close but afar as well in the area in Green Hills that they're concerned with the amount of dogs that are on the loose and some of them being pit bulls. I remember that we had at one point um, in the Green Hills 25 Book of Ordinance uh, something against pit bulls because there have been a lot of problems. Um, since then, a lot of people had come in with the recent problems that they had had and gone through the list of that. Two, two ladies that live on the B section that had done that. We, our answer was that we didn't want to do anything that was not within the Ohio Revised Code. However, do we have any teeth, no pun intended, under the home rule um, act or, or, asset, or to assert some kind of oomph to um, protect our citizens in mm -hmm. Green Hills? Um, we, we will take a look and see what the latest um, is on that particular part of the law, but I will tell you, even under your existing code, you have in your code right now a section that addresses dangerous dogs, vicious dogs, mm -hmm. dogs that are loose. And it has, it has no bearing on what kind of breed it is. It, it just, if you meet the definition of a vicious dog or a dangerous dog or a dog that's at loose, um, we already have that on the books and that can be enforced. It doesn't matter what kind of, what, it's not breed specific. And just as, I mean, a little bit of history, I think most people were around back then, but some, weren't but yeah um, the ordinance on the books used to include a provision that said pit bulls that specific breed of pit bulls were per se uh, vicious dogs you didn't have to meet any other of the elements of the vicious dog definition um, and then two things happened one is that the state removed that from the state law and and said at least at the state level, it would, you could not just classify a pit bull uh, per se as a vicious or dangerous dog. You, it, like any other breed, it had to meet the, 
the definite, it had to meet all the elements of what would make it a dangerous or a vicious dog. Um, that happened, and then at the same time, as we were contemplating, as council was contemplating what changes might be necessary, um, you had a room full of people show up uh, and, and really explain how it is almost impossible to identify um, a dog as a particular breed or to identify uh, a dog as a pit bull. It's not, um, it's not as easy as one would think to, to classify that. So th those two things taken together, um, however many years ago that was, council made the determination that they would um, decided to conform with the state law and take out the breed specific regulations, but keep all of the same things about vicious dogs, dangerous dogs, and dogs running loose. So um, we will check to see if under your home rule authority you have the authority to include that per se definition of, you know, essentially a uh, pit bull ban is what that would, what that would amount to. Uh, so we'll look and see if you have the authority to do it. If you do have the authority, then council will have to make a determination if that's something you want to proceed with. In the meantime, if there are issues, and I don't want to speak for the police chief, but I suspect what he would say is if people are having issues with dogs that are out loose running, you need to call um, so that we can try to deal with those under our existing ordinance. Well, I have a meeting for... Uh Rules and laws and rules on June the sixth at nine a.m. Um, if you can that, yep. help me out with uh, some uh, yeah, we, information we can for do that, that time, I would appreciate it because the amount of uh, contact that I have with mm -hmm. the public um, having to do with that it's it's, it's uh, overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, and I have many of them that are just deciding not to take the dogs out for a walk because they are so concerned with that. Um, so whatever you can come yep. up with and help us out, that mm -hmm. would be great appreciated. Yep. Part we'll of the problem, Maria, is that people are dumping dogs. Just because there's a loose dog in the neighborhood doesn't mean that they came from Green Hills. And that's part of the problem because I've had people reach out to me too. And then they're upset feeling as though the dog warden isn't doing anything when he has been taking action, but there's only so much he can do as well. So well, we the, can't the, control everybody in whether or not their dog gets loose. And then we don't know whose dog it is, somebody would have to pick it up, take it to a local vet, have it checked, and then at that point, it has to have oh, a yeah. dog chip. So and if it doesn't have a chip, out, you don't know. Exactly, <coughs> and they're not wanting to do that because in the people I've talked to, I've only talked to one person whose dog was attacked, and that was down the street for me, and her dog was in, was in the fence, and it was somebody that was walking their dog. So it's completely different than what people are reaching out to. So I would just make sure that they are using the appropriate channels and that they know that just because there's a loose dog doesn't mean that council can come and But scoop they need it up to call the police it. or need to exactly. call somebody to right. exactly. to be able to help them out. Exactly. Right. We get a lot of calls. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, moving on, Clerk of Council, Teresa Lawley. Nothing tonight. Okay. Chief Police, John Howarth. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, like the Chief mentioned, our open house was a success. Uh, rainy. It wasn't the prettiest of days, but uh, I think the ones that did attend had a good time. And when you see the smiles on the kids' faces, uh, it's all worth it. I um, want to remind everybody about game time with uh, Green Hills Police Department, June 22nd, back behind Malloy's at the shelter. Uh, it's from noon till 3 p.m. That's a Saturday. Uh, five years old to mid-teens. We'll be serving pizza around noon time, basketball, kickball, board games, cornhole, and so forth with the kids. So we look forward to that. Also, like to remind everybody about vacation checks. Uh, it's that time of year. We're starting to see them roll in, but as people think about going on vacation, uh, they can go to our website and register their home as a vacation listing. Therefore, the day shift officers will walk around, make sure everything looks okay. And the convenient thing is uh, once they log that, that they check the residence, you actually get an email sent directly mm -hmm. to you uh, so you're notified that, okay, the officer was just at our house and everything was okay. So a little peace of mind plus key holder information that is very beneficial when the officer finds something or I you know who to call and contact that has a key to the residence. Uh, just 
just a few crime stats from last month, the month of April. We responded to 161 incidents during the month. We took out of that, we took 13 criminal offense reports. Uh, they consisted of assault reports, theft, forgery, and criminal damaging. We made five arrests on criminal offenses. Uh, we served 12 arrests for warrants. Uh, we assisted with eight mutual aid calls for services for other agencies surrounding us. We also responded to 22 life squad runs. We issued 40 traffic citations and we issued 25 written warnings. We investigated two auto accidents during the month of April, so that was down from the prior month. Uh, for the month of April, the 13 criminal offense reports we had, we had the same, we had 15 actually in April of 2023. Uh, year to date, we have 20, or year to date, we have 64 criminal offenses reported in the village that were sent to the state, and it's compared to 72 during the same time frame in 2023. So, so I, have Mary, have I have a question um, for both of uh, Chief of Fire Chief and for you. Um, I've become aware there's uh, certain communities uh, in Butler County that they do have um, for the citizens a lockbox for the key in order that if they have a uh, medical emergency or a police emergency, that they don't have to break out the doors to get in or something like that. What is your feeling about that? Have you thought about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll go so, ahead. So, uh, what you're referring to is called a knock box. Mm -hmm. And uh, we carry a master key uh, on our apparatus and yeah. secure it. And currently in the village, we have about four knock boxes. Two of them are on the new school building. We have a private residence in the new section that has one. And um, there's also one. I thought so too. Well, That's why I brought it up. Further, 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 further. No, it's exactly what I would say. Back in the day, maybe you had a program where you had keys to residents and stuff. I don't recommend that. I don't want to get in the key business and, no. and have people's keys to their homes. But, like the chief mentioned, that's probably the best solution. I will also say I've recommended when people call with the same type of question, uh, we can contact the comm center and they can, a lot of people have their garage codes to get in the garage door. And, you know, honestly, not a whole lot, well, I can't say a whole lot, but keys, you know, a lot of times it's electric entry and, and stuff correct, like that. Yeah. You know, so we can provide the comm center with a garage door code. Um, so when we get dispatched, they have that code that the officer is aware of. Okay. You know. And we put it in our record man records management system too, but I don't want to give people false hope that the officer is going to take time to look up their name and address if it's an emergency uh, to get in the residence. So. Uh, the comp center would be the one option, and like Chief said, the knock box would be the best option. Okay, thank you both. Mm -hmm. And for those that are curious, it's K N O X. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and, and Chief, if I could tag yeah. tag on, uh, just <clears throat> last night there was a, apparently somebody on on June Dill jiggling car handles. And, uh, and the officers came out. Correct. And somebody rather, somebody made a call and, and yeah. fled. Well, so. it was next next door neighbor. Okay. And, and uh, um, you know, just a reminder to residents: lock your car in the driveway. And uh, I would even add, nothing in plain sight. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. even if you lock it, if they see something valuable in plain sight. Yeah. 
you have your certain thieves that are going to only get in unlocked doors, but you have some, if they see some of the plain sight, they won't mind breaking a window to get in there. Yeah. It doesn't take long, so, uh, yeah, we appreciate that. So. And thankfully, we didn't take any theft reports from that incident last yeah. night, so hopefully we got them in the beginning. Well, uh, scare them away. So. J section. Keep your eyes open. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Moving on, uh, my report on the uh, court receipts for April. Um, the ending bank balance is twenty-seven thousand twenty-nine dollars and fifty-five cents. Checks to be issued to the state of Ohio: twelve hundred and seven dollars and ninety cents. Hamilton County, $46.50. Village Green Hills, $4,994. Uh, and uh, let's see. I think that's it. That's all I have to add. Uh, moving on, uh, reports of committee, safety, Jeff Halder. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we had um, my first meeting on the safety uh, committee on, uh, the fifth, on the 1st of May. And we covered things uh, such as uh, parking, brought, got brought up to speed on parking issues and back, um, back and forth interaction with the community on that. Uh, we talked about street signage. Uh, police chief um, briefed us on CLIA and where they are on that ongoing process. Um, other things we talked about with uh, so much happening on the weather front, uh, just um, talk, uh, made a new business item of talking about just general safety. Um, and maybe pulling together uh, information. So if power goes out, what do we do? If water is not available, uh, trying to take a broader um, uh, look at some of the safety issues of the village. Uh, and as um, Chief uh, Tony Spaeth mentioned, we're really looking forward uh, to working with a very, very qualified uh, third party that can objectively um, look at this uh, situation with the goal of how do we make this work uh, our fire department is evolving, and we want to make sure that we're checking all the boxes and doing what's best for everybody. But that concludes my report. Okay. All right. Moving on, recreation cable television, Rachel Hudson. Got a lot today, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Um, first, I do want to ask a question. I'm not sure if it's appropriate, but I recently saw that it came in. Um, Yvonne, it might be for you. It was um, a resident was wondering if we are aware of anything about the preschool building, like the small building, um, school building, about the like, one, if, is there gonna, do you know about like demolition or anything like that? The one at the other end of the- Oh, Beach Yeah, yeah. okay. Beach um, yeah. It, yes, what, what we do know about that is it is intended to be demolished. Mm -hmm. They actually had obtained that money at the same time they got the money to remodel all the schools. It was mm -hmm. all part of the package, so. Ultimately, it will be demolished. Okay, so we're just waiting to hear from them, or does it is it after? Is there like a timeline after they're done using the building? Um, I think their plan is to, I, I believe it's after this school year, right? Okay. That they're going to move them to over to Waycross. I heard that they will. So they it were should be very soon thereafter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Just curious. Thank you. And then, okay, part of. My notes, um, Avon already went over with the um, community yard sale that it's $5 if anyone wants to join um, and be located at the green. Otherwise, they can just um, pull everything out in their front yard and give it a go. If they want to be added to the map, they need to call down to um, the village office and let them know. Um, New Life Foundation will have a truck parked on Eswin by the Commons to take uh, larger items that don't sell or just take donations, even if someone isn't participating in the community sale. If there's something that's too big um, to take down to Eswin, then they can call ahead of time and see if they're able to pick it up. But they are a um, nonprofit that takes donations and gives people, but also resells a lot of stuff for houses. So that was nice for them to come out. And then our rain date is for Saturday, June 8th. Um, it looks like right now there's only showers on the forecast, but so yeah, we're looking forward to it. Okay, and then um, I did want to know, I was down at the pool the other day, 
and it did look nice. And I also noticed the lovely gardens with the fence, and I've seen a lot on the social media page too. So just wanted to compliment you again because that looks all nice. And I did have some residents reaching out. This isn't necessarily me, but to share just if everyone could be um, cognizant of parking on sidewalks. Um, we understand that some of the driveways are slanted, but it can cause an obstruction for people walking. But also, we do have some handicapped residents that they're not able to um, go around a vehicle. So if everyone could be aware of that. And then I also wanted to bring up that uh, I've been talking to, the committee's been talking and talking with the mayor and with Yvonne about um, getting some recreation going again for some of the kids. And uh, one of the first things we're looking at is baseball. And we're looking at the baseball field behind the library as well as um, Palma Park. Um, we're talking about having a paved area for the batting cages that we already have. Um, there's a lot of moving pieces. I have reached out to Steve Denny um, and heard back from his assistants, but, assistant, but since he's going to be the new superintendent, they haven't hired somebody to take over for him um, in the business office. So we're working on that. Um, but I was excited. That was a little bit of positivity that came from the social media pages that um, there was a young resident that had inquired about it being overgrown. And um, he even offered to help with maintenance. So I just wanted to commend him and his mom for just being solution focused and, and reaching out and just inquiring. That was encouraging. And um, yeah, we just have a need for recreation for our kids that are in the community. So we'll be working on that and more to come. I did have a note with the dogs as well. And if anyone needs the number to the dog warden, it's 513-541-PETS, which is 7387. Uh, and when I called to reach out, they said that they'll investigate, issue warnings, and if needed, citations, as well as they're able to call the police department. Um, I wanted to, I have quite a few updates for Waycross. Uh, their film workshop is coming up. It starts next Monday, uh, June 3rd, and there's still openings. The cost is $200 for all eight sessions, which take place in between June 3rd and the 13th. Um, the ages are for teens in grades 7 through 12. They're eligible. Uh, if they are interested, you can call 513-825-2429 or email info at waycross.org. And um, they wanted me to announce that Glenn Hartong is coming back and returning as a summer film instructor. He's an Emmy Award winning producer, director, director of photography and video editor. He was a photojournalist and video producer with the Enquirer and Cincinnati.com for 26 years. And he also has work that's appeared on ABC, CBS, CNN, CNBC, NBC, ESPN, PBS. Douchewell TV and France 24. Um, so they're thrilled about that. And if anyone is wondering just what all those accolades mean, um, I thought it was it attests to just how great they are and what a great program um, we have with Ray with Waycross Media. They were recently um, selected for um, a couple of awards. They were in the one in the running, but they actually ended up getting three out of the seven nominations, and one of the winners was their last summer student film. So that was really exciting to hear. Um, and then also talking to the village manager about possibly having something out of the pool. There are a couple people that have been discouraged that um, we took away the members only after a certain time frame. Um, so we're going to look at that. And lastly, but not least, um, I have told my children that they cannot play video games all summer long. And so they've been out mowing lawns <laughs> for some residents. And I always ask for feedback. And one of the residents who rents had actually paid to have her lawn mowed because her landlord doesn't keep up with it and it had become overgrown. I thought that in itself was encouraging. And then also she said that she's continuing to invest in the property and that she's grateful for Green Hills after moving here from a bad area. Um, with her and her son and so I just wanted to share because it seems like we always hear the negative comments and hearing that was so exciting so that's it thank you Great. good thought, job any questions yeah, yeah. Uh, Rachel I had a couple residents um, and almost back-to-back -back asking about pickleball where, where do we stand with that? Um, 
I would like to see pickleball. Because so if I'm I guess not mistaken, it's as soon as we finish the pass. Yes, the pass. Yeah. Yvonne wants to, um, which we had talked about that in our meeting, was the primary focus is to finish the pass out at the park, and then afterwards we were going to reevaluate and look at that. Um, sorry, because yes, I would like to see that be finished, but there has already been money that's going to um, that's going to go towards the pass, and then also. Um, Baseball is a little bit easier because we already have the fields and such, um, but we're not giving up on that. So, yeah. And just one clarification. Sorry. Yes. My understanding is we have we own the equipment, mm -hmm. correct? Yes. And so really, we're just what would it's about just getting is someone paint out. Paint and nets, right? Which no, I can understand. Well, resurfacing. Oh, I thought it was resurfacing. Well, but probably it's going to need it again. And there was okay. a discrepancy between the two mm -hmm. pros on. Right, How right. That was market, market. Yeah. Yeah, there were things well, that like was, that. Yeah. But our, we also need to improve the parking. We need amenities, and that's why, with a limited pot of money and recreation, okay. if we ever hope to get the paths done, it, you know, if we keep taking it like do this, do that, do this. We we need to yeah. focus, get one thing done, then move on to the next item. So. That makes sense. And there's there's more to it. Mm -hmm. I knew that we had the equipment. Mm -hmm. I knew there was the debate about which direction to paint the lines, but hopefully we can resolve yeah. that. Uh, but there's still involved with the net, and you think that it does need resurfaced on another time? I, I'll take a look at it. This time I saw it looked kind of rough. Okay. Again, could it and maybe what I can do in the interim is I do have some contacts that I reached out to to try and see if we can settle the houses to be set up and things like that, okay. just different contacts than last time. So I can start to reach out there just to get the ball rolling and get answers. So at least then when we have the money, we're ready to go. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I was going to say, didn't I hear that Waycross will be showing a talking with? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. I forgot that there was a separate <laughs> email. How could I forget? Oh, my gosh. Please don't arrest me. I will have just two seconds. Um, sorry. I actually marked their emails as, like, important with a star, and I didn't realize that it put it in this whole other thing. So I just found the one from Kurt um, today. But, yes, he said that. Um, the Green Hills Memorial Day um, observance was brought, it's broadcasted, so they taped it if anybody wants to go back if they missed it. And then also, um, they hosted a taping of Talking with Green Hills Chief, and it'll start airing in June. And I think, and then of course the commons are going to be covered, the concerts on the commons will be covered as well. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Rachel, if you, want, if you want to reach out with, to somebody having to do with pickleball, that plays a lot. As Aunt Rob, he was the one that first started uh, looking for that. I, I, uh, got, I got good contacts. I appreciate you, but we're okay. just going to start fresh so we can hopefully get it done. Okay. okay. All right. Um, yeah. Intergovernmental okay. affairs, laws, and rules, Maria Walter. I have only two things. We have a meeting coming up, and that would be on June the 6th at 9 a.m., and also that there is a, um, a meeting of the Municipal League, and that is in Akron, and uh, Mr. Lee is going to be attending that. Okay. All, right. All right, finance and audit, Jack Lee. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, council at your place uh, tonight is a, is a copy of the re general fund recap for the month of April. Um, you'll, you'll note that both the uh, income tax and real estate tax uh, are, are continue to show positive trends. Uh, good to see that the real estate tax duplicate has showed up uh, and, and uh, showing a positive uh, sign there. Uh, the general fund balance at the end of April 2024 was $2,329,371.57. On the expense side, uh, expenses uh, are are up, uh, but they are well within uh, the percentage of uh, appropriation that that we planned for at the beginning of the year. Um, there were no transfers uh, from the general fund to uh, any special accounts at, at, at in the month of April, and none anticipated. Uh, at this point. So unless anyone has a question, that's the end of my report. <coughs> oh, and we have a meeting on the on June 9th as well. So 
And, and what could you clarify me who, for me who's going to go first on that meeting? Well, me. I, <laughs> <laughs> so yours will be at nine. Yeah. And I'll be at nine thirty. Yeah. Nine thirty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll, we'll, that way we can free up that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Development, Jim Boner, Warren. Yeah, Warner. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just have one item tonight. Um, I'm just going to update everybody that um, we are working on the Green Hills Beauty Beautification Award to be awarded in June. Um, municipal manager and I drove around for a couple hours on Friday afternoon, just making a list of candidates and really, really enjoying a lot of hard work that the uh, that all the, all the residents have, have been mm -hmm. um, making, making, you know, there's some really sharp yards out there. It's a really going to be a hard decision. Um, so with like two pages of, of, of um, candidates are just really pleasing yards. So uh, we'll be naming a, um, two, two or three awardees next month at the uh, June council meeting. So uh, more to come then. I don't know if this is a community development question per se, but are there garden uh, spaces still available? You know, the village garden? They're all taken right now. Oh, okay, yes. good. That's important for people to know. Have to build more. Put that on the list for next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay, services and streets, Melanie Hermes. Um, just I have the resolution to read when we get to that point, and um, it's good to see some of the money coming in from grants and projects happening, so that's exciting. All right. Hey, this is an opportunity for residents and non-residents to make comments solely regarding legislation that's on the current agenda, um, and non-residents must obtain prior permission. Since nobody's asked, we don't have any of those. This is the time for citizens to comment on legislation listed on the agenda for the ses this session of council. When recognized, please come forward to the podium. Complete the sign-in sheet. Verbally indicate if you're a resident of Green Hills. Uh, and then state your comments. Comments will be limited to four minutes. Okay. So we have no unfinished business. New business ordinance number 2024-0. Yes. Oh. What ordinance? 02-S. Amending Chapter 1511 of the Green Hills Codified Ordinances regarding the adoption of the fire code and declaring an emergency. Mr. Hall. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have Ordinance Number 2024-002-S. Amending Chapter 1511 of the Codified Ordinances of the Village of Green Hills regarding adoption of the Ohio Fire Code and declaring an emergency. Whereas Chapter 1511 of the Green Hills Codified Ordinances provides for the Fire Prevention Code of the Village, and whereas Council has previously adopted the Southwest Ohio Safety Council Unified Fire Code by reference in Chapter 1511, and whereas Council has determined that it is in the best interest of the Village to repeal said code and adopt the Ohio Fire Code by reference for Chapter 1511. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the Council of the Village of Green Hills, members elected thereto concurring. Section 1, that Chapter 1511 of the codified ordinances be amended to read it as set forth in the document attached hereto as Exhibit A and incorporated herein by reference. All other provisions of Chapter 1511 not speci specifically amended herein shall remain in full force and effect. Section 2, that this ordinance is hereby declared to be an emergency measure necessary for the preservation of the public peace, health, safety, and general welfare, and shall be effectively, effective immediately upon its adoption. The reason for said declaration of emergency is the need to adopt the updated fire code at the earliest possible date. I move to adopt this ordinance. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? Hearing none, clerk call the council. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Mr. Borner? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Mr. Holter? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Okay. Motion passes. Who don't move? For the emergency clause. Oh. It was part of it, wasn't it? It was part of it. 
It was part of it. Oh, okay. It's in the title. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's been so long since we've done it. <laughs> okay. All right. We don't have to suspend two readings. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, okay. Let's back up. Okay. Confused me. <laughs> We've already had the reading of the ordinance, and yes, to adopt it uh, with one reading as an emergency, you would need to um, consider a motion to suspend the rules requiring two readings on two separate occasions. I would like to make a motion to suspend the reading of the ordinance on two separate occasions. Okay. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded. Clerk, pull the council. Mr. Halter. Aye. Ms. Herman. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hudson. Aye. Mr. Borner. Aye. Ms. Walker. Aye. Good. Motion carries. Yep. All right. We're good. Um, the uh, uh, ordinance number 2024 no, 002 02-S passes. Next resolution, number 2024, R04-F, requesting information from Hamilton County Auditor for purchases of purposes of evaluating and levying a tax levy exceeding the 10 mil limitations. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Resolution 2024, R04-F, resolution requesting information from the Hamilton County Auditor for purposes of evaluating and levying a tax exceeding the 10 mil limitation. Whereas the council has preliminary determined that the amount of taxes which, which be, may be raised within the 10 mil limitation will be insufficient to fund necessary services provided by the village of Green Hills, Hamilton County, Ohio. And whereas the primary purpose and intent of such funding is for the general construction, resurfacing, re and repair of streets, roads, and bridges in the municipal corporation as authorized by uh, section 5705.919G of the Ohio Revised Code. And whereas Ohio Revised Code 5705 Point oh three requires the village council to obtain certain information from the county auditor prior to proceeding with the submission of an additional tax levy to the electors of the village. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the council of the village of Green Hills, Ohio, section one, that the village council has preliminarily determined that it is necessary to levy a tax in excess of the 10 mil limitation for the benefit of the residents of Green Hills for the general construction, resurfacing, and repair of streets, roads, and bridges in the municipal corporation as authorized by Ohio Revised Code 5705.19G for a period of five years. Section two, that the renewal levy shall be submitted to the electors of the village of Green Hills, Hamilton, County at the November general election to be held at the usual places within said village of Green Hills on the fifth day of November 2014. Okay. Section 24. Tw oh, what did I say? 2014. 14. Oh, 10, 10 years too late. Uh, 2024. <laughs> Section 3 that the said levy shall be placed upon the tax list for 2024 for collection in 2025 if the majority of the electors voting thereon vote in favor thereof. Section 4, that the village council hereby requests information from the county auditor related to the current tax total valuation of the village and they and the dollar amount of revenue that will be generated by a levy of tax at the rate not exceeding 1.5 mills for each $1 valuation for five years. Section five, that the village council seeks the information request to present the levy on the November 5th ballot. November, section six, 
that the clerk of the village council is hereby directed to immediately certify to the county auditor this resolution and to obtain from the county auditor the information requested here, here under section seven that this resolution shall be effective immediately upon its adoption. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, any comments or questions? Was he working on Cincinnati time 10 years behind? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I will mention that uh, it reads a 1.5 mil levy. This is a renewal levy, so there's no increase in taxes. And if we're passed as a new millage this year, it would be actually 0.4 mils, four tenths of a mil. So the effective rate has reduced that since it's such an old levy. So it'll generate the same amount of money that it did in 1979. All right, clerk, poll the council. Ms. Hermes. Aye. Mr. Hudson. Ms. Hudson. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I messed that up twice. Miss Hudson. I didn't. Oh. Aye. Yes. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> Warner. Aye. Miss Walker. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Mr. Holt. Aye. Okay, resolution <coughs> number 2024 uh, R04-F passes. Next resolution, number 2024-R05-SNS, authorizing the manager to, pre to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Transit Infrastructure Fund Program and to execute contracts as required. Ms. Hermes. Resolution number 2024-R05-SNS, a resolution authorizing the municipal manager of the Village of Green Hills, Ohio, to prepare and submit an application to participate in the Transit Infrastructure Fund programs and to execute tr contracts as required. Whereas the Transit Infrastructure Fund program provides funding for the general construction or maintenance of roads, bridges, and related facilities involved in the provision of transit service by the Regional Transit Authority. And whereas the Village of Green Hills is planning to make capital improvements to Damon Road and Springdale Road and other infrastructure as necessary in the village. And whereas the infrastructure improvement herein above described is considered to be a priority need for the community and is qualified project under the Transit Infrastructure Fund. Now therefore be it resolved by the Village of Green Hills, Ohio that Section 1, the Municipal Manager is hereby authorized to apply to the Transit Authority for funds as described above Section 2, the municipal manager is authorized to enter into any agreements with the transit authority as may be necessary and appropriate for obtaining this financial assistance. Section 3, that this resolution shall take effect and be in force from and after the earliest period allowed by law. By law. I uh, move for the adoption of this resolution. Second. Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? All right. Clerk, poll the council. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Mr. Borner? Aye. Ms. Walker? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Mr. Halter? Aye. Ms. Hermit? Aye. Okay. Resolution number 2024 R05 SNS passes. Next one, resolution 2024 R06 CD. Supporting the Ohio Commission for the United, United States, yes, 250th uh, <laughs> anniversary, <laughs> Mr. Mon. <laughs> All right. Uh, resolution number 2024-R06-CD, supporting the Ohio Commission for the United States Semi-Quincentennial, America 250-Ohio, whereas the Ohio legislature legislature and the governor created America 250 Ohio in 2018 to plan, encourage, develop, and coordinate the commemoration of the 250th anniversary of the United States and Ohio's integral role in that event and the role of its people on the nation's past, present, and future. And whereas America 250 Ohio hopes to engage all Ohioans and all 88 counties through their many signature and officially recognized programs 
projects and events over the next several years <coughs> by inspiring future leaders and celebrating all Ohioans' contributions to the nation over the last 250 years, and whereas by adoption of America 250-Ohio resolution, we hope to educate, preserve, innovate, and celebrate. Now therefore, be it resolved, and it is hereby resolved that the Village of Green Hills, a National Historic Landmark, hereby endorses America 250 Ohio and their mission to educate, preserve, and innovate and celebrate every Ohioan in every county. And it is further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Green Hills Municipal Legislative Delegation and America 250 Ohio Commission. Mr. Mayor, I move that this resolution be passed. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? Clerk, roll the council. Mr. Coulter. Aye. Ms. Hermes. Aye. Mr. Lee. Aye. Ms. Hudson. Aye. Mr. Borner. Aye. Ms. Walker. Aye. Okay, resolution number 2024-R06-CD passes. And okay, next mm -hmm. rep. Go we, for it. Uh, can we? Uh, do we want to suspend? No, we can't. We read it. no that's we right. You can't do read it. it. Yep. No. All right. The next one's a big one. <laughs> Resolution number 2024-R07-F, declaring the necessity of providing for control of blight and disease of shade trees. Mr. Lee. The blight and disease of printer's ink here, too. Uh, let us know if you need a... Uh, uh, well, well, good, <laughs> good, good, good to go. Resolution 2024-R07-F, resolution declaring the ne necessity of providing for providing the control of blight and disease of shade trees, whereas it is necessary that work be authorized for the purpose of controlling blight and disease of shade trees within the pro public rights of way up for planning, maintaining, including leaf collection, trimming and removing shade trees in and along the streets of the Village of Green Hills during the years of 2025, 2026, 2027, 2028, 2029, 2030, 2031, 2032, 2033, 2034 and whereas the municipal manager has recommended to council the planning maintaining trimming and removal of shade trees in and along the streets of the village of green hills during those same years in accordance with the plans estimates and schedules there for here to for prepared by the village by the municipal manager and whereas the Village of Green Hills does not have the necessary funds to implement the shade tree program. Whereas chapter 727 of the Higher Revised Code provides for such tree maintenance and planning in, and the levying of the assessment therefore, and whereas the Village of Green Hills has previously established the Green Hills Forestry District to assess a portion of the costs associated with its shade tree program and without the assessment the village does not have the necessary funds to implement the shade tree program now therefore be it resolved by the council of the village green hills ohio members here to here there to concurring section one nature and location of improvement it is here by determined and declared necessary and conducive to the public health, safety, and welfare to control blight and disease of shade trees within the public rights, rights of way for planning, maintaining, including leaf collection, trimming, and removing shade trees in and along the, the streets of the Village of Green Hills during the years of 2025, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34, that for this purpose there is thereby created and established a single district known as the 
2025, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, Green Hills Forestry District, which shall include all territories within the boundaries to be coexisted with the Village of Green Hills pursuant to the provisions in Section 727.011 of the Ohio Revised Code. No, I know, I know. <laughs> Plans on file. The work for such planning, maintaining, including leaf collection, trimming, and removing shade trees in and along the streets of the village hill village shall be done within the 2025, 20, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 2024 Green Hills Forestry District. I think we need to shorten that name. But anyway, in accordance with said plans, estimates, and schedules now on file with the, with the office of said municipal manager, said plans, estimates, and schedules are available for inspection in said office, and said municipal manager be and is hereby authorized and directed to purchase required materials to purchase or rent the necessary tools, machinery, and appliances to employ the necessary labor to do said work, all in accordance with said plans, estimates, and schedules. The, pre the present estimate of cost of said work is $100,000 annually. Section 3, cost. The cost of controlling blight and disease shade trees within the public rights of way by planting, maintaining, trimming, and removing shade trees in and along the streets of the village of Green Hills shall be specifically assessed by the, by the foot front upon, upon all lots and land bounding and abutting upon each street within the 2025, 20, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 2034. Green Hills Forestry District in the amount of $1 per foot front as provided by section 727.011 of the Ohio Revised Code, which said lots and lands are hereby uh, determined to be specifically benefited by said work in the amounts specifically assessed ag against each said such lot and corner lot. Lots having frontage on more than one side, including corners, shall be com computed at 75% of the total lot frontage. The maximum assessment per single family resident shall not exceed $120 annually. Section four, the mode of payment said assessments shall be paid in one annual installment and they shall be certified by the village Green Hills finance director to the Hamilton County, Ohio auditor for collection at the same time in the same manner as real estate taxes due and payable in December 2024, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 2033. Are, can be, are collected. Section five, notes authorized. Notes of the Village of Green Hills may be issued in anticipation of the levy and collection of said special assessments. Section six, cost estimate. The municipal manager B and is hereby authorized to prepare an estimated assessment of the cost and expense of said shade tree program for the inclusion in the Hamilton County, Ohio tax list for 2025, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, and 2034, and incorporation in December 2024, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, and 2033 real estate property tax bills based upon the foot frontage assessment method of $1 per front foot as set forth in this resolution. Section seven, a 
authority here hereby is granted to publish the notice of this resolution in <coughs> according to the sections 727.14 of the Ohio Revised Code by posting the same in the usual posting places and by causing an advertisement to be placed in a newspaper of general circulation in Green Hills. Section 8, that this resolution shall take, a, shall take effect and be in full force and after the earliest period allowed by law. Mr. Mayor, I move for the adoption of this long resolution. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments or questions? And I just get ready for the next two ordinances yeah, that are resolutions yeah. that follow this. <laughs> <laughs> They're not quite that bad. <laughs> All right, clerk, poll the council. Ms. Walker? Aye. Ms. Hudson? Aye. Mr. Lee? Aye. Ms. Hermes? Aye. Mr. Borner? Aye. Mr. Holter? Aye. Okay, resolution number 2024-R07-F mm -hmm. passes. Uh, the next one, uh, do we have uh, council comments? Anybody have any comments they want to make before we do the calendar? I just wanted to make a comment um, about the park, um, the playground over here. I know that the school, at, at the last couple days of school, they um, were teachers brought their classes over to the park area, um, and it was an absolute disaster. They brought water bottles. We spent at least a half hour picking up stuff, and then it happened again. Yeah. Um, I think the disappointing point for me was that there's teachers present, and um, it, I, to me, I think it's a responsibility to teach the kids that you just don't bring a, have a party and then just leave everything behind. Uh, so I don't know if we could put together some polite, respectful letter to say, you know, you're welcome to use these parks, of course, but um, to, you know, to just make such a mess of them and leave it that way. And it was other residents that mentioned it to me, saying, hey, when are you going to clean up that park? And I'm like, what? We just cleaned it up. And then, sure enough, they had another there day the next yeah. day after. Yeah. So um, I'm sure it wasn't maliciously done, but um, I do think we should uh, say something to those that are leaving the school over there. That's all I've got. Anybody else? All right, municipal calendar. June uh, 6 at 9 o'clock, uh, finance first, and uh, Los Angeles second at 9.30. June 1st is the um, community yard sale. Quickly file followed by the concerts on the commons are starting. Great, Jim Miller Day on the 5th. Mm -hmm along with the first concert. And then I forgot to mention my first park talk is on June 20th at 6. And then we'll establish, um, if you need to have a safety meeting uh, with Mr. Kramer and everybody involved, um, we'll just have to look at calendars and get together. And June 22nd is the game day game with day. the mm -hmm. police department. All right. This is a time for citizens to comment on matters before council. When re recognized, please come forward to the podium, complete the sign-in sheet, verbally indicate if you're a resident of Green Hills or a non-resident. Not, nobody non-resident requested to speak. Um, if you have questions, the questions will be recorded and referred to the manager's office for response. This will allow time for thoughtful and thorough consideration to be given to each question council. Meetings are recorded for ease of transcriptions. Comments are limited to four minutes. Speakers may not yield any or <coughs> all of their time to other speakers. Monique Mason Halter, Green Hills resident. Thank you to council members for writing a letter to the Federal Communications Commission, or the FCC, to ask the agency to comply with the 2021 court order 
to specifically address scientific evidence related to the health and environmental impacts of radio frequency, aka wireless radiation. I'm glad the council also addressed its desire to keep home rule regarding um, the installation of cell towers and other wireless infrastructure. I also appreciate that in 2022, the majority of council members voted in favor of passing a protective small cell towers ordinance to try to regulate their installation in the village. As I've mentioned many times already, our ordinance is still not as protective as other ordinances passed by Ohio communities, such as Amberley Village, Anderson Township, and Marymont. That's why I continue to ask council to strengthen our ordinance, so it is. It's probably been a while since I've spoken at meetings about the OTARD rule, O-T-A-R-D. OTARD stands for Over-the-Air Reception Devices. A few years ago, the FCC amended a version of this rule, so it allows private property owners to place fixed point-to-point -point antennas supporting wireless service on their property and extend wireless data voice services, including 5G, to users on neighboring properties to facilitate fast deployment of mesh Wi-Fi networks, 5G, and the ground infrastructure for SpaceX satellites. It allows antennas on homes while preempting all state and local zoning authority. No permit is required. The Amberley Village Ordinance was written to prevent this type of installation on private property, and I'm asking that the village council members strengthen our ordinance to do this as well. I would be glad to meet with any of you to discuss this in more detail. I think we can all probably agree that there are various safety risks associated with installing 5G or other wireless antennas or towers on private property without a permit. One of them is interference. Public safety officials, utility companies, utility trade groups, and others have filed lawsuits against the FCC because, quote, 5G would create an unreasonably high potential for radio frequency interference that could disrupt communication systems that underpin the safety and reliability of the grid, end quote. The OTARD rule has also preempted federal and state civil rights laws that protect the disabled and their rights for accommodations since people have no right to object to these devices. None of this sounds like a safe thing for any American community. That's why I ask again that you strengthen the small cell ordinance in ours. Thank you. Good. Anybody else? Meeting adjourned.